Storm Team Weather Center here on this uh, April the 13th, 2022. It is uh, 2 42 p.m. Uh, and we're going to discuss the chance of some severe weather heading our way uh, later on this evening. It looks like the main time frame is around 7 p.m. until 11 p.m. tonight. Uh, so that's been adjusted a little bit sooner than the timing we had yesterday and the day before. And there might be a rogue thunderstorm or two that develops out ahead of the main line a little bit later this afternoon that we'll need to watch as well. Right now, uh, the tornado watch boxes are out to our west, a big area under tornado watches from southern Illinois into western Tennessee, northern Mississippi, Arkansas, and into uh, Louisiana. Um, so eventually that line is going to make its way um, through our area. The Storm Prediction Center, they are a division of the National Weather Service, and their big job is to look across the country and see where severe weather might happen. And the moderate risk has been nudged just a little bit uh, farther to the southwest of us. We are under level two and three. Most of our area under that uh, risk level three out of the five uh, severe weather outlook risk levels. Uh, so either way, um, storms sometimes don't care about these little boundaries that you see on this map. We just need to be extra weather alert for tonight to be weather aware and know your place to go if you need to seek shelter and do it immediately if a warning is issued. We've got uh, potential for some uh, damaging straight line winds. I think that'll be the main issue if we get some bow echoes on the radar signatures moving in later on um, this evening. Again, that time frame 7 p.m. until 11 p.m. I uh, could get some hail out of some of the stronger cells and can't rule out an isolated spin up tornado as well uh, a little bit later on this evening. And we're gonna map this out in a lot more detail here with Futurecast here in just a second. Let me make sure everything is streaming okay here. Um, then after about 11 p.m., we'll have some leftover showers as the cold front uh, moves through. And outside any thunderstorm chances, it's going to be very breezy out there. We've got a wind advisory for a good chunk of the area with some wind gusts up to around 40, 45 miles per hour. So just a blustery day um, and then eventually tracking that line, that squall line that will move in. Uh, after about 7 p.m. in our western counties. Some of the latest data suggesting uh, around I-65 in Metro Louisville around 8 to 9 o'clock this evening. Uh, just to give you a time frame there. And then tomorrow the sunshine returns and uh, I don't see a severe weather chance after today for quite some time. Our weather pattern is going to be calming down a bit and our Easter weekend isn't looking too bad as well. All right, just looking over some of the comments here before we get to Futurecast. And we'll put the radar back on. So things right now are pretty quiet across the area. Uh, we've had, uh, obviously, some wet conditions uh, throughout much of today. What we're going to be watching here off to the southwest is a clearing, which is not what we want. That can make the atmosphere more unstable. So right there to our southwest is sunshine and that's going to ramp up some of the unstable air uh, for the storms to use a little bit later on. Um, so right now just some plain old rain crossing the area and again that severe weather threat ramping up a little bit later on this evening. Here is a look at future cast. Uh, so what we do need to watch out for is that potential for a little rogue uh, shower uh, thunderstorm that could pop up out ahead of the main line which we uh, again expect to move in a little bit later this evening. That is 7 p.m. So there you can see it uh, bumping up to around Paoli, Jasper, Du Bois County, Bedford, Indiana. And we just got some brand new data into our future cast map here. Um, some of the latest weather model data. There's Interstate 65, Metro Louisville, again, 8 to 9 o'clock. So that timing um, is still there. And then by 10, 11, that threat is off to the east. So kind of like that four hour time frame, seven to 11 um, is when we need to be most alert to the potential of severe weather. Still some leftover showers. The actual cold front moves through overnight and then there you can see we clear it out. It's gonna be a little chilly in the 40s tomorrow morning and then some low to mid 60s tomorrow afternoon with some sunshine returning across the area. We'll go back to the bigger map here where you can see again a lot of the tornado watches out to our west and southwest. Lisa Elker, thanks for tuning in. Gary and Janet Hutchins, Marilyn Stewart, Barbara Ray, Christina Ferenci, Deanne Clute, Diane Brome, Chris Hall. 
How's it going? Sarah Humphress, good afternoon to you. Beverly Hagist says, the sun trying to come out in Borden. Yeah, we're going to get a clearing for a little while, uh, which will kind of juice up the atmosphere for those storms uh, later on this evening. And speaking of the juice or the fuel for thunderstorms, uh, here's a look at what we call the storm fuel map. This is the convective available potential energy, otherwise known as unstable air. And it does begin to go up later this afternoon out ahead of that line. So we do have the energy for severe weather. There is a 6 to 7 p.m. as that line moves in. But notice that the energy is weakening as we head towards sunset, which is good. So hopefully that will also uh, lead to that line weakening later on tonight. And notice by 10, 11 o'clock, the energy for severe weather is off to our east. As far as rainfall totals go, many areas could see up to about an inch of rainfall. That is our grand total right there. I don't think it's going to be enough to cause any significant flooding across the area. We'll zip past the energy map once again. We'll take a look outside. Feels pretty good at the moment. Wind gust 26, tips in the lower 70s. Lori Cruz says, good rainy day. Susan Fox, what about Jeffersonville, Indiana? Jeffersonville, Indiana looks like 8 to 9 o'clock time frame for that severe weather potential. Same for Shepherdsville. Uh, I will concur with Lisa Smith. Everyone stay safe. Steve Gibbons, thanks for tuning in. Robin Edwards, you're welcome. Jonathan Sanders, hello to you. David Miller is not enthused about the weather this evening. Me either, but it's uh, that time of the year, April and May, the peak severe weather months for our area. Uh, Mary Barber wants the rain to hold off until her husband has finished mowing. You don't want to see my yard. I've yet to mow <laughs> this year. It keeps raining when I've got the opportunity to do it. Uh, Beverly Hornback, you're welcome. Thanks for tuning in here. Uh, Kathy's asking, when will it start in Grayson County? Getting some when will it start questions. We'll go over future cast here uh, for some of you that have been just tuning in. Thanks for watching our live stream. We've got meteorologist Alden German right over here to my left. Uh, we will be monitoring the severe weather situation very, very closely um, through the rest of this afternoon and evening time. And I can't wait for the sunshine to return tomorrow. Get this mess out of here. Adam Dufour, thanks for tuning in. Amber Mead, Barb Rainbolt, Evelyn Lewis, Louise. Yeah, so it looks like we'll get a break in the rain for maybe a few hours. And again, that will kind of recharge the atmosphere for the active weather that we're going to have 7 to 11 p.m. that's out ahead of the actual cold front the cold front will move through with a few leftover showers overnight um, but our main concern at this point in time is 7 to 11 from west to east across the area and again damaging wind threat the main issue but uh, an isolated spin up tornado is possible we do not have any watches for our area at this time there certainly could be an expansion, an extension of the tornado watch this out to the west over our area uh, later on tonight. So we're going to be uh, working with the, the our weather cast together here, Alden and, and myself, starting at 4 o'clock on WHS 11 News, coming up in about an hour and 10 minutes. And we'll give you uh, all the updates you need uh, right here on WHS 11 here shortly. And just had rain in Orleans most of the day. Much, much of many of us have had that today, of course. Joyce Wells, thanks for watching. Uh, Diane asking, what does Easter look like? Might be a few light rain showers Easter Sunday. Temperatures uh, look like they'll top out in the low to mid 60s. We've got 62 a high on Sunday. Saturday looks good, mid 60s, um, and we'll look at the seven day here in just a second as well. Gail Vernon, thanks for tuning in. And Mary Hilk from Georgetown, Indiana, Sandra Mattingly, Steve Conover. Uh, Steve asks, in our two and three out of five severe weather risk category that we're in, uh, should we worry about hail? I don't think hail is going to be a main issue. We might get some hail out of uh, some of the supercells that pass on through, but the main concern is going to be some damaging straight line winds and maybe an embedded uh, brief spin-up tornado as well. 
it looks like the large, strong, long track tornado threat is going to stay uh, off to our southwest. Haley, what about uh, Valley Station? 8 to 9 p.m. time frame right now is what the, the data is suggesting. Joyce Wells, Darla Jeffries, good afternoon. Angie Blevins, Meade County could be a little bit sooner, uh, maybe around 7 to 8 o'clock. Don Barkham, thanks for watching. Taylor Hall, Spencer County, looking like about 9 to 10. Uh, Casey, how high is the tornado threat? Uh, areas west of I-65 have a little higher threat of some spin-ups uh, later on today, but overall um, the tornado threat is not all that great here. Um, we might end up with a few tornado warnings though later on tonight, and if there is a warning we'll let you know immediately so you can seek shelter. Don Yeoman, no drones tonight. Yeah, a little too breezy for that. Lynn Jansen, thanks for watching. Jacqueline here. Uh, Rose Mattingly, Debbie Dilling. Hammy would have been, Debbie, that's for sure. Christy Marzian, thanks for watching. Wanda Lackey, Morgan Lewis. Morgan, will a tornado watch be issued for Harrison County in Indiana? There is the potential that we could get a, a tornado watch uh, issued for our area later on today. Right now they are out to the west of us. Don Yeoman, who's doing the morning news? That would be Chelsea Smith. Rita, thanks for watching. Mandy. All right, let's go over uh, Futurecast again, then we'll wrap things up because I know we got some folks just tuning in asking about when is it going to hit my area. So here is a look at what we've got. Uh, that's the rain that we have over the area now. Uh, so 3 p.m. basically now we get a little bit of a break. What we hope won't happen is what you see there in the middle. Uh, once the sky clears, the air becomes unstable. and There might be one or two what we call sometimes a rogue supercells that fires up out ahead of the actual line and those can be little spinners sometimes and so we'll need to watch out uh, for an isolated damaging storm uh, during the late afternoon hours. But the main issue here is uh, the main event so that's 6 37 o'clock that's out towards Jasper, Paoli, Bedford, Indiana and we've got a lot of questions about Meade County Breckenridge County, Grayson County. That's right at 8 p.m. So maybe 7:38. Weather models aren't perfect, so you know, give or take, half hour, an hour sometimes. Um, but that's all west of I-65, 7 to 8 o'clock. Let's bump it up to Interstate 65, Metro Louisville. That's 8 to 9 o'clock. You can see it passing through Scottsburg, Seymour by that time, um, getting close to Elizabethtown. And notice it's kind of a squirrely looking line. It's not just straight up and down. Um, so where you, we get these little kinks in the lines, that's where you can get a little spin up tornado. Um, you can get little bow echoes, which on the apex of a bow echo, bow echo you're gonna get um, some damaging straight line winds. Uh, might be a uh, little bit of hail involved in this. All right, so now we're at nine going 9 to 10 p.m. So areas east of I-65, that would include you there in Newcastle, Carrollton, LaGrange, Bedford, Kentucky, Shelbyville, Taylorsville, Bardstown, Bloomfield, Springfield, Lebanon, Greensburg, Taylorsville, Columbia, Munfordville, Hodgenville. Um, so you're looking at uh, 8.30, 9, 10 o'clock around that time frame. And then we want it to be east of us by around 10 to 11 o'clock. So that is the severe weather threat. Then the actual cold front is that thin little strip that you see moving through after midnight. Um, that is not expected to be severe, but we could have some gusty winds out of that as it moves through. Temperatures drop as we dry out. Sunrise, seven o'clock tomorrow morning. Temps will be in the 40s in most locations. There's our lunchtime in the 50s and then some low to mid 60s and sunshine for tomorrow afternoon. We'll take that into Friday. First half of Friday is looking dry and partly sunny. 
starting to see a chance for maybe a few light rain showers by Friday evening. That should not be a big deal for us. And then finally, let's wrap it up with the uh, seven day forecast. And then we'll see you at uh, on the television, WHS 11 News, on our WHS 11 app. You can get our live stream as well, um, our on air content. You can get uh, notifications, interactive radar, whs11.com as well. So if the TV ever goes out, you can still have your app. We can still uh, communicate with you through there. Uh, so 66 tomorrow and some sunshine, seven day forecast. Temperatures kind of level off in the 60s for this Easter weekend. Uh, looks like a few light rain showers on Sunday for Easter Sunday. Um, looking drier in the morning Sunday, so it should, probably should be pretty decent for the Easter services. Later in the day, maybe a shower or two, and then 60s to around 70 as we go into next week. Uh, might be a little unsettled by next Wednesday. All right, so to wrap it up, here is the severe weather threat across the Mississippi Valley into the Ohio Valley. The moderate risk of severe weather is to our southwest. It does include western Kentucky, however. Um, and then as we get deeper into the evening as that line moves in, we hope it will weaken with time. Still could have some uh, severe weather potential from around 7 to 11 p.m. Uh, our area is, from the Storm Prediction Center is under risk level two and three out of the five severe weather risk levels. All right, thanks for tuning in to our live weather stream. I'm Chief Meteorologist Ben Pine, beside meteorologist Alden German. Um, we're gonna be watching things very closely. If we get any alerts, we'll get them right to you on WHS 11.